Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you a truly bizarre situation that came up at a recent tournament Scrabble game. This game was played between two experts, Will Scott and Steve Grob, at a recent one-day tournament held in Michigan. Now, in this position, Will finds himself at a deficit, but he has the bingo of Glottis on his rack, and he finds it playing it on the 14th row over here with Rifes. Now, the problem is, Rife is an adjective, it does not pluralize. So Rife's is not a valid word, and Steve is aware of this, and challenges Will's bingo off the board. Now, it's worth mentioning if we go back here, instead of playing Gladys with Rife's, as Will did, he could have actually played it over here, making the valid hook of Mox, and this scores two more points than the invalid placement that Will made with Rife's. My guess is Will thought Rife's was good, and he didn't want to play it here because he wasn't too keen on slotting that G in the triple-triple lane, which is totally understandable. So, after Steve challenges Gladys and Rife's off, he has this rack, as we can see here. He has A-E-E-I-I-L-W. And this is really the main position that I want to discuss in the video. And it's, uh, it's not that interesting a position it doesn't seem like at first, right? Steve's got a pretty bad rack. He's got five vowels in the W. Not much good about this rack, it seems, at first. And Steve uh, played the word while over here for 19 points which uh, seems like a pretty reasonable play. You can see it's the highest equity play that the Wugglesbot finds. Uh, and once again, by equity, I mean points and leave. Uh, he can score more points with something like a Wii over here. It actually scores 10 more points, but it keeps two eyes, which is really bad. So uh, this leave, at least, it is a little bit vowel heavy, but it's nice and balanced as far as the vowels go. A, E, I together aren't too bad. So uh, it's a perfectly reasonable looking play. However, the interesting point about this position is that Steve just challenged off a phony bingo by Will. And that means that Will's tiles all got returned to him, and Steve thus has full knowledge of what Will has on his rack. Namely, he has Gladys on his rack. And Steve knows that Will found Gladys, right? He just played Gladys. He happened to make a phony hook. So he's going to find Gladys again on his next turn, and most likely, if it stays open, he's going to play Gladys with Mox. So... That leads to the natural question, then wait a minute, shouldn't Steve have blocked Mox and prevented Will from bingoing, since he doesn't have any other valid spots to play the bingo? And, well, the answer would normally be yes in theory. However, the thing is, Steve actually can't block this spot, as crazy as it sounds. It's not that easy to block. Steve doesn't have a tile that hooks Mock, right? It doesn't take an A. Mocha is a word, but it's spelled M-O-C-H-A, so he can't put his A there. Uh, he doesn't have anything that would go through this Y-E-R. He could play something with Iyer, but that doesn't help him. He'd need to play something down from this Y-E-R, something like Yerba maybe, but he doesn't have that. Uh, he can't play anything through the mock. Uh, he can't hook this Vo. It's worth mentioning Evo is a valid word in the Collins Dictionary, but it's not valid in the North American Dictionary, which this game was played in. So Steve actually has no way to block Gladys, which he does correctly deduce, and that is part of why he played while. He's like, all right, Will's going to bingo there next turn. I can't stop him. I might as well just maximize my equity. And that normally is a very smart play. However, like I said, Steve actually has an amazing way here. He can take advantage of his full knowledge of Will's rack. And here's the key point. Once again, Steve knows that Will just bingoed with Gladys, forming an invalid S hook, and got challenged off. So Will's next turn, pretty much with certainty, is going to be bingoing with Glottis and Mox, making a valid hook. And once again, as we discussed, Steve cannot block that. So you have to imagine whatever Steve does on this turn, Will is going to bingo with Glottis and Mox. And here's the key point, guys. If Will were to bingo with Glottis and Mox right now, while Steve has this rack, watch what would happen. So if Steve hypothetically passed here in this position, then if Will bingoes with Glottis... Steve would have the amazing triple-triple of Wegelia for 167 points through that G in Gladys. Despite having an A, two I's, and two E's on his rack, he has this natural 5 vowel 8 of Wegelia for 167, which would catapult Steve to a 314-153 lead, very hard to surmount, and Steve would almost certainly be winning this game. So, with that in mind, let's go back to the original position right here, where Steve played Wild. So does this all mean that we've solved the position and Steve should simply pass his turn right here and then assume Will is going to play Gladys and Steve will triple-triple back with Wigilia? Not necessarily, because the problem is if Steve passes, that's going to set off major alarm bells for Will, because it's never really correct to pass your turn in the middle of a Scrabble game like this. Sometimes you will see specific situations at the very beginning of a game where it's maybe correct or possible to pass to try to induce a six-pass where you think you might have fewer points than your opponent. Or at the end of a game, 
where, say, in a pre-end game, you're trying to avoid drawing the Q or other unplayable tile and you have a bit of a lead. Those situations are rare, but they do come up. That being said, it's never, ever really correct to just pass your turn in the middle of a game like this. If your rack was so bad you couldn't really find any valid plays, you wouldn't pass, you would exchange tiles. So if Steve passes, then Will's going to be like, wait a minute, what is he up to? And that very well could arouse enough suspicion that Will is going to think Steve is just hoping he plays Gladys in the valid spot with Mox, and that would probably give Steve a massive play. And it's not outside the realm of possibilities that if Steve passes, Will is going to be apprehensive enough about playing Gladys there that he might forego his bingo, giving up as much as 50 points to do so, in which case Steve is going to have very limited options, as of course he'll still be stuck with this pretty dreadful rack, which really does nothing. It has 5 vowels and a W. Uh, it doesn't accomplish anything without a G for Wegelia. So, Steve should not pass here. What he should do instead is pretty funny. What he should do is phony. And he should play a phony, though, that is... Ridiculous enough that Will's definitely going to challenge it off, but not so ridiculous that it arouses a similar level of suspicion as passing. And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, let's first look at something that is extremely ridiculous. So Steve could just be like, all right, I'm going to play some sort of crazy triple-triple through this queue for like 260 points, and obviously he's going to challenge it off. So I don't even know what he could play here. I'm just going to put something down here, right? Like, obviously this is absurd. And uh, Will is clearly going to challenge this off. But there's two problems here. Number one... These are Scrabble experts, right? These are not new players who have never played a tournament. And if Steve plays this, Will is going to know that he is completely up to something, and there's no way he would actually try this in a tournament game. And he's going to have a very similar level of suspicion to if Steve passed. And not only that, if Steve does this, he's actually revealing all seven of his tiles to Will. And Will is going to see Steve's full rack after challenging off this phony, and he's going to know, oh, wait a minute, if I play Gladys there, Steve is going to triple-triple with Wegelia. I see what he's up to. So this is definitely not the play for Steve. It completely defeats the purpose of what he's trying to do. So with that in mind, Steve should maybe try something a little bit less ridiculous and also not play so many tiles. Because if he plays well, all seven tiles, as we just saw, or even six tiles, then that's probably going to be enough for Will to sense he's going for Wegelia through that G if Will bingos with Gladys. So something more reasonable I thought of would maybe be to just play a few tiles, something like this, A-I-A-N, and of course the absurd phony of IQ. And on one hand you might say, oh, it's a two-letter word, and I mean, come on, all these experts know their two-letter words, IQ is just as ridiculous. And it's true, right? I mean, obviously no one is going to normally, I should say, intentionally play a phony two-letter word, because yeah, as I said, all these experts know the two-letter words down cold. However, as you've seen in some of my other videos, even the top experts do occasionally inadvertently play phony two-letter words. And with QI being acceptable, it's not completely inconceivable that if Steve played this, Will would, I'm sure, still notice and challenge it off and believe, huh, maybe Steve was, like, looking at it upside down and thought he was playing QI or something. Who knows? It's, it's not unreasonable. And Will would probably be surprised, but not necessarily so confused and so taken aback that he would pass up his bingo next turn. Um, and you could make the argument that maybe Will wouldn't even notice this because it's only a two. Uh, that's possible, I guess. I mean, the nice thing, though, is for Steve, if Will doesn't notice, he's still getting 41 points and getting rid of two vowels. Like, it's not that bad an outcome for Steve, even if Will doesn't notice. And uh, I think it's pretty unlikely that uh, that Will wouldn't notice this. I mean, you're playing a tile in front of a queue. Nothing goes in front of a queue. So I think this would be a pretty reasonable option for Steve. Another option that was uh, suggested by my friend Sid Morali when I showed him this position was playing the phony of Awi, A-W-I-E, on the bottom right over here for 29 points. And uh, this is another reasonable option. Uh, Awi is not a word spelled like that, but Awi spelled A-W-E-E -E is a word, and so is Awi, O-W-I-E. Now, this is a four. These players uh, should know their fours very solidly. They're strong enough that uh, they should have good knowledge of their fours, so it would be pretty unexpected for Steve to make a mistake like this, but it's still not inconceivable, and it's also possible that maybe he accidentally played the I instead of an E or something like that, and I don't think this would completely raise alarm bells uh, like some sort of crazy triple-triple or passing would. I think this would be another reasonable option. It's worth mentioning that there's nothing to worry about in terms of putting this uh, E over here, Will knows, uh, or excuse me, Steve knows Will's rack, and there are no eights with Gladys plus an E. It also doesn't give Will any plays on the right. Gladys would not fit next to F-A, because uh, there are only six spots over there if he hooks the S to make Foz. 
So this doesn't give anything to Will that he didn't already have, and Will would most likely challenge this off, play Gladys and Mox, and give Steve Wee Gilia as he wanted. So that's another option. Uh, there are a few other ideas that uh, I or other players who looked at this position came up with, and one of them, suggested by Josh Sokol, is the rather amusing Will Make through this mock over here for 15 points. Uh, and the idea here is that it looks sort of like Welcome, and uh, if Steve played this, Will would maybe look at it and think, huh, Maybe Steve, again, kind of like my IQ idea, got confused, or maybe he was processing the board upside down and thought he was playing welcome. Um, and actually, two kind of amusing things could happen here. One of them is, of course, just as we were talking about before, Will notices this, challenges it off, and gives Steve his G for Wigilia. Another one, which would be maybe even funnier, is Will doesn't notice the transposition, and then plays Gladys and Will Makes, and then Steve challenges that off, which honestly wouldn't be that bad an outcome for Steve either, because... Then Steve still manages to dispose of his W, uh, Will would lose another turn, and then um, at this point, Gladys actually doesn't play. So Steve would succeed in preventing Will from playing his bingo. So this is not an unreasonable idea, uh, and like I said, from Will's perspective, he might think, oh, huh, Steve was trying to block that spot, and he was looking at the board upside down. So not an unreasonable try either. A few other ideas here would be possibly playing something with a hook on mock that is phony. Like, you could play... For instance, the word Ilya over here, uh, which is a valid four, but Mocha is not valid like that. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, Mocha is only good with an H between the C and the A. So Steve could try this. Uh, Will would presumably challenge this off, especially as it blocks his only spot for Gladys. And uh, maybe this is reasonable enough that Will would think, huh, maybe Steve just had a momentary lapse and thought this was good for some reason. So I don't think that's an unreasonable try either. Uh, one thing you could do is maybe hook an E on Vo, because as I mentioned earlier, Evo is valid in the Collins Dictionary, and some players do play both the Collins Dictionary and the American Dictionary, so uh, if Steve played something there, perhaps uh, even just you like this, or maybe uh, the valid five of Whaley over here, it wouldn't be completely unreasonable that Will might believe this play was due to a momentary lapse of Collins confusion, uh, in which case Will would probably challenge this off and then just kind of shrug it off as uh, Steve for a second thought that we were playing the other dictionary, and then Will would probably go about his uh, his plan of playing Gladys and Mox, in which case Steve would, of course, be very happy and triple-triple on his next turn. A few other options is that uh, we could look back to this spot where I was talking about the suggestion of Awi over here. Uh, you could possibly play Whaley, as I mentioned in this spot, making the uh, rather absurd-looking three of SIW. Uh, and again, this is sort of like my IQ example. It's more in that vein, because, uh, of course, I mean, these experts are going to know that SIW isn't a word. They know they're threes extremely solidly, and an SIW is just so absurd looking. But uh, again, kind of like the IQ, Will could maybe think Steve just spaced and either thought he was playing WIS, which is this three backwards, which is a valid word. Maybe he thought the I was an O and he was playing Sal. I don't know. I mean, you could infer some things here that would make it somewhat reasonable for Steve to accidentally make this play. So again, not a crazy idea. Uh, and the final option, which was uh, also suggested to me, would be to play Awi over here. And Awi, as I mentioned earlier, is a valid four-letter word. However, this play, of course, makes several phony overlaps. Uh, SIA is not a valid three, FW is, of course, not a valid two, and EE is not a valid two either, at least in the North American lexicon. It is valid in Collins, but not here. So this makes three rather absurd phony overlaps. Uh, but the idea here is that Will might think, if Steve plays that, that, okay, Steve meant to play Awi over here, which would be a valid play, and a pretty reasonable looking play as it scores well and dumps a lot of vowels. So that would be the logic, basically hoping that Will just thinks he accidentally shifted his play by one spot, challenges it off, and uh, goes about his normal plan, bingoing with Gladys, after which Steve will slap down Wegilia, as mentioned earlier. So, all of these are reasonable options. Uh, what should Steve do? The beauty of this is, I don't actually know. Like, this is just not something you ever really see come up. It's such a weird situation. I think either way, Steve should 100% phony here, and he definitely should play something not so absurd like that triple-triple through the queue that just gives away what he's trying to do. He definitely shouldn't pass, and he should play something that is, like, re either, either reasonably believable as a word or reasonably believable as a lapse, like a, a phony two or a transposition like that. And uh, another thing Steve should probably think about that would lean towards playing the, the W is that if Steve shows bad tiles to Will with his phony, then Will is going to be less likely to think about playing the G on the A column as a dangerous idea, right? So if we go back to 
a few of the ideas I mentioned earlier, right? Like Ilya over here. Those are four very good bingo tiles. And Will might think, okay, I'm not sure I really want to put a G there because these tiles go pretty well with a G. Uh, and that might raise some alarm bells. However, if Steve phonies with, uh, say, Aoi over here in, in this spot, then Will's probably going to think, all right, he's got a W and two E's and a bunch of vowels. Like, I'm not too worried if I put a G over there. Like, how many words are there with two E's, a G, and a W anyway? So this is probably something like this that plays the W and a few other vowels is probably better than Ilya or my earlier suggestion of AI, which uh, only shows two tiles, uh, and they could easily go with uh, a bunch of other tiles to create a big threat through the G. So Steve should probably play something with the W and with a couple vowels along with it. So I think... Awi there, or even Awi over here is reasonable. I think my favorite option, though, is Josh Sokol's suggestion I mentioned earlier of, well, Make through this mock already on the board. And, uh, I mean, this is probably the most hilarious one. Just uh, what a funny transposition of titles of welcome. And uh, not only that, I think it's actually best for a few reasons. Number one is if it stays on the board, it's actually not a bad outcome for Steve because... He gets rid of his W and a couple of vowels. Yeah, he keeps AII, which isn't great, but he still gets rid of the, the W. Uh, and he also, most importantly, blocks Will's bingo, right? A lot of these other options don't actually block Will's bingo. So if, uh, for whatever reason, Will decides to accept the play or doesn't notice, then it's kind of backfires for Steve because Steve doesn't keep Wagelia and Will still gets his bingo down without giving anything back. So uh, with this, not only does Will not have a spot for his bingo, but... If Will doesn't notice this, then he's presumably going to not notice it because he actually reads this as welcome. And then he's probably going to bingo with Gladys and Will Makes, in which case Will's going to actually lose another turn. So in that way, it could sort of work out for Steve in that direction. Like, it's sort of a win-win for Steve if he plays Will Make, because presumably either Will is going to challenge this off and then hopefully just play Gladys and Mox and, and give Steve way Yilia, or... Will is going to not challenge this off, thinking Steve actually played welcome, and then respond with Gladys and Momakes and lose another turn. So uh, in, in that way, it's sort of a double trap Steve is setting for Will, which I think is really cool. And he could still make the argument, well, come on, Momake is a ridiculous sounding word, and Will is going to challenge this off and then, you know, suspect foul play and not even play Gladys. And yeah, I mean, that's possible with all of these phonies, right? But... I think it's not completely unreasonable because it looks sort of like welcome. This is definitely a type of lapse transposing tiles that does happen. And it shows that Steve was probably trying to block Mox, right? Steve probably recognized that Will had the threat and he was trying to play through it and do something about it. And just, you know, in his focus on that, like just totally lapsed and forgot that it was Mock and not Tom on the board and played well mock -A. Like, I think it's, it's not unreasonable. And I don't think this would arouse materially more suspicion than those other phonies or those transpositions I was talking about, like playing Awi with several phony two overlaps or something like that. I think this is, is reasonable. Like I said, the sort of double trap aspect of how if it stays on the board, it prevents Will from playing a valid bingo and sort of entices him to play another phony hook is, uh, is kind of cool. So I really like this idea, guys. I personally think this is the uh, the best idea I've seen so far. So shout out to uh, Josh Shokel, always very creative, even in these uh, unusual situations for coming up with this. I, I think this is a really cool idea, but, um, but yeah, like I said, the beauty of this position is uh, I don't really know what's best. So if you guys have any ideas you think are better than Will Make or any of these other plays I've suggested, please feel free to let me know in the comment section because I'm sure there are some equally or even more creative and hilarious phonies that could be possible for Steve to play here, and uh, I'd be uh, very amused and curious to hear them. So, uh, so once again, suggestions always welcome, but especially so on this video, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts. And uh, before I close out the video, I'll just talk about a little bit what actually happened in the game. So as I mentioned, instead of phonying or passing, Steve played while. Will, of course, bingoed with Gladys and Mox, uh, and Steve drew this. He drew a bunch more vowels and ended up playing Beagle. So as you can see with this sequence, Steve ends up uh, ahead by 43 points. Uh, so this is far, far worse than the other possible sequence where he phonies and then Will plays Gladys and Steve triple-triples with Wegelia, where, if you recall, Steve ended up up 161 points. Now, Steve would still go on to win this game, but it certainly would have been a lot less stressful for him for the rest of the game if he had seen the idea of phonying and then playing Wegelia next turn. So, uh, yeah, pretty amazing stuff. I uh, Like I said, I have never really seen a situation like this where it is so clear-cut. You do occasionally see this kind of idea of trying to induce your opponent to give you a certain tile, but uh, never in this way where making a blatant phony is so clearly the right play.
Uh, so yeah, pretty amazing stuff. And and yeah, once once again, guys, I legitimately don't know. Like this is such a rare thing, and it's just something that completely goes against the common ideas of Scrabble. That like I legitimately don't know what Steve's best play is there. Like I know he should phony, I just don't know with what. So there could be some better phonies than uh, more reasonable tries than what I came up with. So once again, let me know in the comments what do you guys think Steve should have phonied with and. Uh, yeah, feel free to suggest anything from the uh, utterly ridiculous to the, the reasonable, because I don't really know. But yeah, once again, really excited to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, got a kick out of it. And uh, yeah, maybe if uh, some of this situation happens to you, you'll be able to use this tactic and uh, take advantage of it, because I think it is pretty cool. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Once again, hope you uh, enjoyed, appreciate all the support, and uh, let me know what you think. Look forward to reading the comments. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.